This is Twit. I saw this news a little bit ago, and it kind of piqued my interest. The uh, you know, Micah, you have a MetaQuest uh, to I have a MetaQuest to right now when it comes to that price category. And by the way, uh, Meta very recently raised the price of the MetaQuest to to four hundred dollars, so making it less affordable, but still. Yeah, still kind of in the range of affordability, I suppose, when you're talking about, you know, the ne- next generation kind of uh, uh, VR hardware uh, without going all in on like a major kind of VR computer uh, system uh, to back it up. Um, so Meta has its MetaQuest 2. It's really kind of the go to for that price category. It's become the easy thing for people to recommend as long as you can get over the hooks that Meta has into it. Um, but this news actually kind of shows that you know, big tech, big tech kind of follows in its own small and exclusive club. They're all chasing the same things, right? ByteDance, who is the parent company of TikTok, uh, just revealed this morning the Pico 4 headset. And it really seems to be a direct competitor to the MetaQuest 2 when you're talking about this kind of level of VR, this self-contained VR headset um, level of VR. It has inside out cameras, of course, it's uh, powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2, 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, it has 2160 by 2160 pixels per eye. So that's not bad. 128 to 256 gig storage options. Oh, I mean, basically, most of what I'm reading here sounds very, very similar to what we have with the MetaQuest 2. Uh, mm-hmm. Pricing for this ranges from 429 euros if you're getting the 128 gig storage model to 499 euros if you're getting the larger 256 uh, gig storage model. What you do get here that you don't get with the MetaQuest right out of the box is if you can see that headset there, the strap that goes around your head on the back of it is is the battery. I don't know if that's oh, the only nice. battery, but that's that's a battery pack. And ultimately what that does, obviously that allows, you know, to uh, to extend the life of this without having to plug it in and charge it um, as often. But it also distributes the weight. And that's that's definitely a complaint that I've had about the MetaQuest 2 is, you know, there it's an accessory that you can get to get that added battery. And I think the battery does place itself on the back if you buy that, but that's an added cost here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of part of the hardware. So, and then you can see the controllers there. All these controllers uh, end up seeming eh, pretty familiar, but different enough to have their own kind of style and flair. Now, the thing about the Pico 4 is it's not set to ship in the US. I don't know if that's like for good or just for now, but right now it's launching in several European and Asian countries. Uh, pre-orders in October, shipping October 18th. So the hardware itself, when you compare apples to apples, looks very similar to what Meta has with the MetaQuest 2. But this is in light or in comparison to what we're expecting next month from Meta. And we've known about uh, a device coming from Meta that they're working on called the Cambria. I think I think the Cambria might be the uh, kind of the... Uh, whatever the the in development name i don't know if that's mm. the official name yeah, for the hardware like the once it launches yeah the code name exactly um but the cambria is going to be a really big step up i'm i'm super curious about this so the 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 pico 4 headset isn't meant to compete with this cuz it's actually the the cambria device offers more um it will and actually we're we're not going to wait very long by the way to see this meta connect is on october 11th and from what I understand, it's almost a certainty that we're going to see this. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg has already teased in the past <laughs> that the newer kind of upgraded uh, Quest hardware will be seen in October. And then you've got this event in October where they usually <laughs> introduce hardware. So it's almost a guarantee that we're going to see it. But what does it offer? It offers uh, eye tracking. It offers facial tracking. So these are these are things you know that are a step up from what we're used to on this consumer level uh, VR right now, if you can imagine being in a VR experience and having eye tracking with the person that you're talking to, instead of that just being kind of like, you know, kind of ghost-like, very generic, you know, eye, eyes fixed forward, facing wherever the face happens to be facing. Now you might have the possibility of having a more realistic um, eye contact experience, that sort of thing. Facial tracking could potentially, gosh, I don't know how they do that effectively, but Obviously, they're you know they've they've figured out a system so that avatars in VR 
aren't just, you know, randomized between smile and, oh, you're talking. So we'll do a mouth open uh, animation, you know, that sort of thing. Right. Maybe maybe these things can be a little bit more realistic and and really kind of increase the uh, realism of the whole experience. And that's not to mention the higher resolution screen, which personally I feel like is a really important part. I know some people feel like that's less important than other things. Uh, I so disagree. I think it's incredibly important. I'm, I'm with yeah. you um, because that is the difference, I think, for there, like there are two things that are the difference for people who get sick in VR. One is the frame rate or refresh rate, and the other is the resolution of the screen. The higher the resolution you can get and the better the refresh rate you can get, the less likely you are to fill to feel ill while you are using the device. So a thousand percent, I think that's so incredibly important. And I, like, I would even say, stop trying to do all of those other features until you get this perfect, because that is yeah. the thing that's going to keep people from wanting to be part of, you know, a longer term VR experience is if every time they use it, they get ill. That's not, yeah. that's, oh, for that's sure. not great. <laughs> And it really only takes a couple of those experiences for you to be like, yeah, I've tried VR. I don't like it. And then exactly. you don't try it forever, you know, mm -hmm. if ever. So, yeah, I totally agree. Um, now, this Cambria device, from my understanding, more geared towards uh, to uh, pro users, also kind of meant maybe more for business because this thing is apparently going to be a lot more expensive than the $400 price point that we're used to right now. It's also going to have a mixed VR or sorry, mixed reality uh, capabilities. So it's not just going to be all entirely within the goggle. There will be a little a little bit of handoff and interplay between what's in the in the room versus uh, in the goggle. And so super curious to see how that all develops. But, you know, again, going back to Pico, which um, they have a pro version of the Pico 4 that is Rumored and has been known about for a while now, actually, um, when Pico announced uh, earlier this week that they would be making an announcement about new hardware, people who knew, you know, were following this closely kind of expected that there would be the Pico 4 and the Pico 4 Pro announced. But uh, with Oculus having their new hardware next month, you know, maybe Pico has a, a different plan to reveal their kind of competitor to that after the fact. I don't know if that does them any favors or maybe there's a technological reason, but essentially this pro version of the Pico 4 would, I mean, on, at least with the limited information that we have right now, go somewhat toe to toe on features. It will have uh, eye tracking. It'll have facial tracking. I don't know about the mixed reality kind of use case of it, but it'll definitely be uh, much more expensive, focusing on enterprise users, focusing on those pro users. So I think what what kind of uh, struck me about this is just kind of yet again realizing that like these big tech companies are actually playing in a very limited uh, kind of pool together. It's like they're all, you know, so often we're talking about social media and this one, you know, this company does this thing and then, you know, like Be Real, for example, and then suddenly everybody has their Be Real or Clubhouse and then suddenly everybody has their Clubhouse. It's a very, but, the, but it's all kind of interplayed within this small group that, that just kind of tosses the ball back and forth. And um, I think we're starting to see that in VR. Of course, VR is a little bit different because there aren't a whole lot of players creating for you know creating hardware for vr of this scale of this potential scale anyways meta really takes that blows that out of the water but a company like ByteDance, you know powering tiktok i could see and, and tiktok just on having so much momentum right now could be really interesting and that's not even considering apple which is somewhere right around the corner. I, I don't know. Do you know, like, are you aware of the latest machinations there? Is this like next year that we might see an Apple VR or no one knows Probably for sure? Probably next course, year. But, yeah, we, yeah, we don't know for sure. Um, it could be next year. I think the first introduction w could, <laughs> could possibly be uh, at WWDC, which happens in the summer um, yeah. of 2023. Uh, but who knows? Because Apple is reportedly working on both a VR and an AR headset uh, and potentially a mixed reality device as well. And so what gets released when and what is the final product or final products 
is all up in the air. And yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see. But eventually Apple will have um, a VR slash AR headset as part of the the market. And that's going to be a pricey affair as yes. well. And of course, Apple doing what it's done so many times where it kind of it comes in later than, let's say, competitors do it mm -hmm. on doing something. But in, you know, in the, the magical way that Apple is able to do it, they're able to, you know, use that time to create a project, a product that uh, when they come out really seems like, OK, I know you're coming late, but you're really bringing it when you come. And, you know, it, it can often be kind of like a, a defining moment for that particular hardware category. So I Absolutely. could totally see Apple doing that as well. But I think this kind of paves the way. And, you know, that's going to be incredibly expensive from what we understand. These are going to be pretty pricey. So it kind of seems like these uh, these these uh, different levels of VR are starting to become a little clearer as far as like, OK, 400, 350, 400 dollars has been the norm for most people. And maybe, maybe, you know, I'm sure that will continue to be a price point that people can buy into. But the really exciting stuff for this, because. This is, uh, you know, it's a new technology and well, new in air quotes, but mm -hmm. it's a new technology with momentum right now that really stands to benefit from that premium experience in really interesting ways. And so I'm I'm curious to kind of see how this like upper tier, upper echelon of VR actually uh, defines the category and if this can kind of move that momentum along. And I, you know, love it. I agree or disagree, but Apple is really good at creating that momentum when they finally decide to to enter in. So I see that happening too. But uh, but yeah, so there you go. Pico hardware. I don't know if we're going to see. I mean, Pico has released some VR hardware in the US. They've actually been around since 2015. So they've been doing VR longer than Meta has when you uh, consider that. Uh, they were acquired by Bat, uh, ByteDance last year. So with ByteDance backing Super curious to see kind of where Pico uh, resides in this realm and if if some of this hardware, you know, comes in in a larger scale to the U.S., which is something that Meta has, you know, has got totally buttoned down, uh, being able to bring its hardware pretty much anywhere. Can Pico do the same with uh, ByteDance? Remains to be seen. But there we, we go. Shall she. Shall she. <laughs>